Welcome to today's webinar from Toradex. Uh, today with a guest, Altex, uh, one of our uh, partners. And today we will talk about how you can get uh, x86 uh, binaries uh, running on Toradex ARM-based computer modules. So my name is Daniel Lang. Uh, I'm from Toradex. I will give you a very brief introduction about Toradex. I assume most of you uh, know about Toradex. And then I will uh, give the presentation to uh, Gochar, which will then uh, give you, uh, step you through their solution. So let's start. So Toradex was founded 2003 in Switzerland and we still have our headquarters there and most of the development uh, is done in Switzerland. But in the meantime, we also have uh, offices around the world. Uh, for example, I work in Seattle, but we also have in Brazil and in Asia. Uh, you can get uh, local support uh, in all these offices and you can also buy the product directly from there. Our main product are a uh, system on modules or sometimes also called computer on modules. So what that is, is it's a small module and basically the whole embedded computer is on there. So you have memory, CPU, uh, you have connectivity 32, I square C, everything on a small module. What's a little bit special about Toradex is that we also provide the operating system. And actually we have much more software engineers than hardware engineers. So we want to make sure all the drivers are uh, work with the maximum performance and we make it easy for you to, to use our product. Currently we provide a Linux where this webinar will focus on Linux solution, but we also have a Windows Embedded Compact and we have a solution soon, or we work on one uh, with Windows 10 IoT Core. So if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to get in touch with, with us. Uh, so a few advantages of system or modules. Um, you can get to a market much faster, you can uh, reduce risk and use Scalable, uh, you're scalable. So if there is a new SOC coming out, you don't have to redesign your whole product. You can just plug in another module. Also, it's very easy to get started. So if you're familiar with a Raspberry Pi and can use a Raspberry Pi, you can use our models. But then if you want to scale up to 100,000, 10,000 of product, you can use exactly the same models and they're really designed uh, to be also used in, in high volumes. Uh, we have two main product family, so one is called Apolis, uh, that's based on an MXM3 uh, type connector, and this has interfaces very similar to a PC, so you find PCI Express, Gigabit Ethernet, SATA, uh, USB 3.0, HDMI, and so on, on on that module. So especially with the webinar today in mind, you, you may have an application from, from a PC and would like to bring that to a smaller form factor, lower power, uh, low cost, then that, that's maybe a, a good solution because you still have all the PC-based uh, interfaces. But we also have the Colibri uh, modules. There we have them since about 10 years and they're a little bit smaller. And here we also have a little bit our lower end uh, SOCs and you can have a uh, Colibri module volume starting at 24 US dollar and that includes everything, I mean the CL licenses, a flash, memory, RAM, Ethernet, all the connectivity. We also have something called customizable single board computers and that's basically provides several carrier boards of the shelf carrier board and then you can use any of our modules and plug them in. So you, you, you have a single board computer, but you can say if you need more performance, you can go let's say an IMX6 quad core, or you need, don't need so much performance, you can go with a Freescale a Vibris, that's a A5 with 400 megahertz, so you can scale performance and, and price. But with that said, most of our customer, they actually design their own carrier board. 
So all of our standard uh, carrier boards, they're open uh, hardware. So you can download the complete design. For example, we provide the complete Altium design file. So you can download it and uh, customize that by, the, by yourself. If, if you don't like one of our off-the-shelf carry board but don't want to do a, a design uh, by yourself, you also have a solution. We have a, a partner website. On this website, you can find uh, companies which already did the design uh, with Toradex product and like to offer that, that service for others. Uh, I tried to show you that here um, live. So that's our uh, Toradex website on www.toradex.com. You can go to support and then you can click on services. And now you can, can see all our partners. And then, for example, you can click on carrier boards. And now you see all the companies which provide carrier board design and already did a successful design. But as uh, explained earlier, we also do the operating system, but we don't do stuff on top of the operating system. So for example, if you look for a software partner, which does Qt, uh, you can click here on Qt and then you see Qt companies. For example, we work with the Qt company and uh, provide with them together a, a nice solution so you can easily get started. We also have other stuff like a PLC uh, software, like soft PLC, like Codesys, or you can even get other operating systems like QNX uh, from some of our partners. That's also how we connect with uh, LTEX. There, if you click here on virtualization, you can see they are listed as one of our partners. So with that said, I like to get the presentation uh, to Gochar and she will explain you more about their solution. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, I am Gochar. I am an application engineer at LTEX. Uh, today I'm going to tell you in details uh, about the LTEX solution that uh, allows you to run x86 applications on ARM-based modules without uh, recompiling applications. Uh, so let's get started. There are hardware that is based on Intel x86 CPU architecture and hardware that that is based on ARM CPU architecture like Toradex ARM modules. And uh, the problem here is that uh, software for these two architectures are not compatible. I mean that uh, an and the program that was compiled for uh, Intel x86 architecture cannot be run directly on ARM hardware and vice versa. But uh, here uh, LTEX provides their solution. And uh, within it you can run Intel x86 applications on ARM. Suppose you have a ARM-based ARM module uh, with Linux. You can install LTEX Exegear solution on it and with LTEX Exegear, you will be able to run standard x86 applications directly on this ARM module. And simultaneously, you can run native ARM applications on the same ARM module. This solution has advantages. It helps you to save costs and time of migration to ARM platform and because you don't need to uh, to port, to recompile uh, x86 applications to ARM. Also, you can avoid risks of the, uh, of the change that are connected to changing the uh, software infrastructure. You just take your x86 software infrastructure and run it with LTEX Exegear on ARM module. Uh, LTEX solution advantages are high performance, reliability, and ease of use. Current release version of Exagear has 60% of native performance. How we get this number? We measure the running time of the application compiled for x86 architecture 
and running on our module with Exagear, and the running time of the same uh, application compiled to ARM and running natively on the same ARM module. And we get the re relative 60% of native. Our development version is 70% of native, and we believe that we can get 85% uh, of native performance in the final version. Also, our solution is reliable. We use a lot of uh, techniques to provide reliability of LTX Exagear solution. We do per permanent testing. We use software engineering best practices. We have internal self-checking tools and we use external checking tools. And also we have developed a random test generators that we use for permanent testing of our LTEX Exegear solution. Along with all this, our solution is very easy to use. And you, I will show you it in, in the demo later in this presentation. When LTEX Exegear solution is very useful. Suppose you have an old application, x86 application without support or without source coders, uh, and you would like to run it on ARM module. In this case, you can use LTEX Exegear. Also, if you are using a custom or a certified x86 software, you can run it without any changes with LTX Exegear on ARM module. Even if you are using an open source software, you might have a version that you might need a version that is not available on ARM. And uh, even some open source software requires proprietary libraries that are not ported to ARM. So in this case, LTEX Exegear solution will help you as well. LTEX provides several approaches to implement Exegear, and I'll describe you them. For example, you have um, uh, an x86 uh, software infrastructure that is running on x86 uh, on x86 hardware and you want to, to migrate to the ARM hardware, to the ARM module. But you cannot do this because x86 applications won't run on ARM themselves. Altex solution will help you with this problem because the first approach and the, uh, the very simple and the straightforward is, as I said before, you can if you have an ARM module with Linux, you can install Exotex Exegear on it, and within it, you will be able to run any x86 application on this ARM module. Another approach. Suppo suppose you have uh, ported your x86 applications to ARM, but you have uh, a particular x86 application that cannot be ported to ARM. For this, we propose to install LTX Exagear on our module and run this particular x86 application using LTX Exagear simultaneously with native ARM, with other native ARM applications. The third approach is if you have ported all your applications, but one particu particular application uses x86 library that cannot be ported to ARM. You can use LTX Exegear installed on ARM module to run this particular library. This approach is a little bit complicated in implementation, but if you really need this solution, we, we are ready to help you to implement it. A little bit different approach is the next one. Suppose you have x86 application that cannot be run, cannot be ported to ARM. We can provide you with the solution when we wrap your x86 application with LTEX Exagear solution so that the whole, um, the whole thing 
LTX Exegear and an X86 application will look like an ARM version, version of that X86 application. And the end user will be able to install it on ARM module like any other ARM native application. Some, in, some, in some situations, this approach is more useful. Uh, it, it gives to the end user uh, an easier approach. And the same solution can be applied to a particular x86 application, uh, x86 libraries. We can wrap the library with the LTX Exegear solution and it will look like an ARM version of that library running on ARM module. These are uh, all approaches that LTX provides, so you see that we are flexible and we, we can help you to choose the best approach that suits your needs and to implement it. And that was the theory. I would like to move to the to the practice. Here I'll show you how Eltex Exegear works in reality and also share with you some real applications examples. Let me share, start the video. Eltex Exegear solution was tested on Toradex Calibri T30 board, ARM board. And this video was recorded on this board. We will open the command line terminal. And here you can see that this uh, Toradex board has uh, an, an ARMv7 architecture. On, on, this, on this board, we have OPKG utility that handles with installing packages. To install Exagear, we provide two packages, Exagear and the Exagear guest. And to install them, you, you simply need to execute OPKG install Exagear and OPKG install Exagear Ubuntu 12.04 LTS. Here on this board we have these packages already installed. And next, by executing the command exegear, we, we, simply, we simply go to the x86 terminal. If we run an R command, we'll see that now it is ix86 terminal. And we can check it by um, checking a simple utility, let's say LS. If we look at its properties, we'll see that this is an Intel utility. Well, this is an x86 terminal and it, it is the same like if it were running, if this terminal were running on x86 machine. Here you can with Ubuntu, Linux Ubuntu. And uh, you can install here any application. And I am going to show you how to install uh, Microsoft Word Viewer. This is a Windows, an x86 Windows application. So, so uh, for running this application, we need Wine uh, program. Wine allows to run Windows x86 applications on Linux x86 system. In this example, I have Wine already installed because uh, installation of Wine takes time and we won't go through, through that process. Uh, and uh, now uh, the process of installing Microsoft Word Viewer itself. First of all, we need to download installation files. We'll download them from the official website using the we get command. It'll take a little bit time, but we have to start from this. 
so we're downloading files and also it is good to download and install file format converter so then we will be able to view not only doc format but docx format as well the last one is more popular in our days we download the first install installation file and now we are downloading the second one file format converter it's almost finished the download is almost finished okay uh, now you can see that we have two installation files and we'll start from installing word viewer we execute the command wine and put the word viewer installation file uh, at the first run wine will make some configuration for it itself and then the installation of Word Viewer will start. Here it is. This is the configuration of Wine. And now installation process of Microsoft Word Viewers is started. We will go through the standard insta installation. Installator will download some files do the other stuff and we see the progress bar here the process is very common and we even can forget that we are doing all this on an on an ARM module rather than the x86 machine with Windows okay uh, a little bit more installation for Word Viewer. Um, also, I should say that we will do the same, we need to do the same installation process for a file format converter. Uh, I'm, I will skip I this process in the demonstration to save time but it will happen exactly the same way like the installation of Word Viewer itself well progress bar is moving and moving and I hope yes we have finished with installation now to run Word Viewer, we will execute a wine and the path to the executable file of Word Viewer. Here, this path is a long, but you can create a shortcut and run. And by clicking on this shortcut, you will be able to run Word Viewer as well. Okay. Word Viewer is starting up. Yeah, here it is. And we can open a file. And we can see that uh, we see this file and uh, we have uh, an access to the to all options of the file. This example shows you that Exagear is almost invisible for the end user. Once you have installed it, you, you just execute one command and you are inside an x86 uh, terminal where you can, be, you can do everything like you were doing on your x86 machine. And you see that there is the x86 application, even if it is a Windows application, uh, working fine uh, on an ARM module with LTX Exegear. 
this is my first example. And also, I would like to show you another one interesting example. I won't go through the installation process. I'll just show you how the application works. One more video. OK. This, this is the same uh, Toradex board, and we are inside the x86 terminal. And this way, uh, in this example, we, we will see the team viewer. This is the program that provides remote access. Although there are a lot of, a lot of different uh, utilities that provide remote access, some companies uh, use TeamViewer to provide support to their customers. And uh, TeamViewer has versions for x86 Windows, x86 Linux, and even for, uh, mobile, for mobile operating systems. But it is not compatible with ARM. And uh, now with LTX Exegear, you can run TeamViewer even on ARM module. This TeamViewer is a Linux version of TeamViewer that we are running inside x86 terminal that was provided by LTX Exegear on ARM module. We are connecting to the remote machine. Connection is successful. So now we have a full desktop remote connection to the other machine and we can browse there. Again, you see that it is very simple in use, and uh, and uh, it is very useful in case of if you are accustomed to some applications and you want to change them uh, for for the substitutors, even if they are substitutors for ARM. Well. These are my two examples that I was going to show you in demo. And uh, I hope you were impressed. Let's switch back to my presentation. OK. This is it. So uh, the first example was installing and running a Windows x86 application Microsoft Word Viewer. And the second example was a Team Viewer. The third example is interesting as well. I cannot demonstrate you it uh, for some reason, but LTEX solution is used to improve control of sor solar plants. I don't have so solar panel here with me. This is the use case from our users, but I'll explain you the situation. This is the arm panel. Uh, in the middle, there is a controller on this panel, and uh, uh, here is an arm, arm hardware, arm device. So a user runs his program that improves the control of solar panel so, uh, on ARM CPU. And um, to send, uh, to send the, their program's uh, operations to solar panel, they use a controller. But this controller doesn't have, doesn't have uh, drivers that are ARM versions of the drivers. So it was not, it, this chain was not possible without Exagear solution. Once you installed uh, Exagear on your ARM CPU in this example, you were able to run an, uh, this driver, this library on ARM and uh, connect the controller and the solar panel with ARM device. This is the interesting solution, I think, as well. Uh, one more case that I can say about examples is that 
the video that I have recorded was done by AVConf utility that I accustomed to use and I was running it uh, with the help of Exegear because I I couldn't uh, find the substitutor or substitutor utility for video recording on ARM, native ARM. And uh, it was easier for me just to use x86 utility that I accustomed to. This is the real life example as well. Okay, so um, if you would like to start, what, sh what could you do? Probably you know about the program uh, by Toradex where they uh, provide a free sample of hardware and LTX is supporting this program and ready to provide you an LTX Exegear free sample to evaluate the solution on the Toradex hardware. For those who are interested with this solution, here I put the uh, web page link where you can fill the form to request the Toradex free sample hardware and then you can send email to info at ltex.com to request the LTX Exegear free sample. We'll help you to decide which approach to use and um, we'll, we'll provide you the full support with LTX Exegear in case you're, you send us an email. Well, uh, I think that this is it from my side. This is, this is all that I was going to show you, to tell you. And now it's time for questions from, from you. Let me check what I have in my questions panel. And uh, also, I would like to introduce Vadim Gimpilson. He is the CEO of LTEX and he, he helps me with the Q&A session. I see that he, he answered some questions already, but we will repeat these answers for everybody. So the, question, the first question, is there an LTEX version for you need on Windows Compact 7, Vadim? No, unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't support uh, we don't support Windows we don't support Windows Compact, Windows Embedded, or Windows. We can <coughs> run Windows application on Linux, Linux application on Linux, but we currently we don't have. For embedded, ver for embedded Windows uh, version of Exager. Okay, and then the question from the same uh, from the same person: Which operating system have been tested? Um, we have tested Linux uh, operating systems Debian and Ubuntu. To be precise, Ubuntu 12.04, Ubuntu 14. 04 and uh, even we are testing right now Ubuntu 15.04 and as for Debian we tested Ubuntu, uh, Debian 7 and Debian 8 and um, okay let's see the next question uh, Vadim do you do you uh, understand the clarification no, question no we no, we didn't test any real-time operation system, unfortunately, now. Okay. Uh, let's switch to the next question. How it will work in case when x86 application uses USB camera or specialized USB driver or Wi-Fi mo Wi module driver? Well, um, Exagir should work fine with uh, with any USB devices. We test. We even tested some cases. Of course, not all of them, because uh, to test such cases, we need these USB devices connected to the R module. But um, we, and we we had also in addition. I can say that we had uh, several cases with USB devices connected to ARM 
and uh, x86 applications of our users were able to uh, to see those uh, devices and uh, worked fine. So if you would like to know more, maybe you can write to uh, write an email to my uh, send and send me an email and we'll discuss discuss your particular case, your application. Well, next, some questions with broadcasting. The question is, what are the limitations in terms of speed and latency? Let's suppose on x86, my application takes 10, 10 milliseconds to execute, then what about on R module as it will work through Exagear? that will increase the latency and reduce the speed. Okay. Um, first of all, let me uh, tell you, let me say that uh, we, it, it is not uh, fully correct to compare an x86 uh, machine with an R machine because uh, they have different characteristics that are in that influence uh, on the final performance of the application but um, uh, regarding the performance as i told uh, during the presentation current release version has 60% of native uh, in general if the application is not cpu intensive and uses a lot of input output operations uh, it, it will be almost without any overheads, say 95% of native performance. So it depends. It depends on the on your application. Vadim, would you like to add something? Um, actually, go hard right. So there is a lot of different x86 CPU you might have a Core i7 CPU and x86 CPU and you might have Atom x86 CPU and difference in the performance will be dramatically maybe four or five times for this CPU so uh, uh, we need to some some correct this question if we have for example if you have x86 CPU which uh, equal by the performance to the ARM CPU. In this case, we of course uh, give some overhead. As Gohar said, uh, present on the slides, the overhead is around on current version 40% overhead of translation. But this is some um, some average number. So, in some particular cases, you can get some more performance with some very, very smaller head. For example, if you have uh, some input-output intensive application like networking or storage when your application works a lot with uh, network or, or with uh, some SD card, or SD card on your board, in this case, we had very, very low it's some something around one two three percent so something like this okay thank you Vadim uh, well next question is uh, how much does LTEX desktop cost is it per, per module LTEX Exegear desktop is available to uh, to purchase on our website and um, the license is per one ARM device and the cost is varying from 20 to 30 dollars per, per license depending on the ARM device version and some features provided for them. Uh, next question is um, how much physical memory will be reserved by Exagear itself? Um, Actually, we uh, Exadir itself reserve uh, around 30, 30, 40 megabytes, but 
also it's additional reserve some memory for for translated code. We translate code in runtime, x86 code in runtime, and if you have some big application x86, we have to translate it and we reserve memory for that. So there is some fixed size and traditionally some size with, which depends on the size of your x86 application. If you have small x86 application, we get small memory for print. If uh, big x86 application, we will have a big uh, memory for print. Okay, and the um, next question is, can the virtual machine be dedicated to a single core? Vadim? Uh, no, actually, if I understand correct this question, yes, you can, uh, if you want to, that your application works only on one core, so it's possible, it's possible to do, it should be pretty simple to, to attach the, some exagir to the sum to the only one core to the only one CPU. Okay, and uh, back to the question about the price. There is a question: Do you have volume discounts? Yes, we have. We can uh, the the pricing that I I described uh, a little bit earlier is uh, for end users for single use for one license. We we also during the presentation uh, I have shown you several approaches and price can vary depending on the approach. This was the price for the first approach where you install Exagear and run all x86 applications with Exagear. This is the first and very straightforward approach. But of course, yes, we. The price, we have volume discounts and also price will vary depending on the approach you choose. We can discuss it. Well, uh, next question is, um, what about Android? Is Exagear compatible with it? Yes, Exagear is compatible with Android. Uh, we have the, this solution, but it, it, we, we have the solution for mobile market. And uh, here we implemented the approach when we wrap x86 application and uh, provide uh, like uh, an ARM version of the x86 application. We put uh, both LTX Exagear and x86 application to the, together into the one APK file that can be downloaded and installed on Android. So the end user even uh, even doesn't know about Exagear. He he just thinks that this is another ARM, another native application for Android. Next question: What is license cost for second approach where we run Exagear side by side with native OS? Well, uh, this this is the first. Uh, Maybe I made a mistake uh, in my presentation slide by not uh, putting the uh, ARM applications for the first approach as well. So for the first and for the second approach, let me go back to these slides. Um, we have the same situation. You can install LTX Exagear and run all your x86 applications on uh, our module with LTX Exagear, or you can uh, port if you would like or if you prefer to, or uh, find a substitutor of your x86 application, an ARM version uh, of that application, and run it natively on ARM, for example, for performance reason. And the rest x86 applications you can install um, on, uh, you, you can install on top of LTX Exagear. So the first and the second approach are pretty similar. This is more uh, not about technical approach, but about the business approach. So, so the, the license cost is also similar, except the, uh, as I said, except the volume license. 
Uh, next question. Do I need to rebuild ARM kernel image for Exagir? Uh, if I get this question correctly, no. You have an ARM module with, a, uh, with Linux image installed on it, and you install uh, Exagir packages on this ARM Linux. You don't, cha you don't change some, uh, uh, your Linux ARM. You just install on top of it uh, Exagir, and then you will be able to install and run x86 applications with Exagir. Um, okay, next question is, uh, that is true, it is not a good idea to compare the performance of x86 and R module. If, if I try to run a good media, media player, built for x86 on ARM using, using Exagir, do you think it will work smoothly? Because even 80% of the performance will also show lag to the listener. If I understand uh, the example correctly, um, we need to deep, uh, a little bit, go deeper inside uh, to the implementation process. So uh, I can say that uh, even you have a media player application that is an x86, uh, you will use some native libraries. Am I right, Vadim? It usually depends on application, application which you want to run. Because, of course, uh, the top Intel x86 CPU is... Uh, have, have much more performance than ARM one, but a lot of applications don't need this performance. For example, from real life, Gohar shows some example with Timur, uh, Timur and uh, what? Yeah, and actually we uh, we try to run, for example, Skype uh, on the on top of the ARM. It works pretty good too. And also we uh, run Chrome browser, x86 version of Chrome browser, which uh, pretty good and playing YouTube video, for example. It's running uh, much more, much more, uh, much more better than actually ARM, native ARM version. So uh, there are a lot. In, in the short, there are a lot of chance that your application, x 6 application, will work uh, smoothly on ARM. Because actually, Teradex uh, board based on uh, based on NVIDIA SOC, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, uh, pretty good CPU, pretty good board, pretty perform, have a good performance. There are a lot of chance to run. Yes, uh, I would like to add to the Vadim's answer that we have seen several examples when uh, ARM version of the application were worse than x86, and in this case we were uh, we we got more than 100 percent of performance comparing to native. Uh, it looks like uh, not real, but uh, it is real because the ARM version of the application in our days currently can be much more worse than X86 applications. The, and the one reason is because of the compiler. X86 compilers have been developed uh, long years ago and they were tuned a lot and they provide uh, better um, performance for X86 applications. And the ARM compilers um, have, have uh, in this in some cases they are worse for some x86 applications or for some applications that are compiled to ARM. And I can even maybe demonstrate you one of the case. Let me check it. We see that uh, one of the benchmarks is above than 100 percent. This is exactly the case when we we got uh, more than 100% uh, 
performance comparing to native performance when we take the, ben the benchmark and com compile it to the x86 and run it with Exagir on ARM module and compile it to ARM and run it natively on ARM module. Next question. Do you offer a version for Cal Calibri T20? Yes, uh, even we, although we tested Exagir for on uh, Toradex Calibri T30, it, it should work. I'm pretty sure that it should work on Calibri T20. The only thing is, uh, uh, Vadim, do you remember Cal Calibri T20? Does it support Neon? Uh, yes, yes, I remember, yes. It's, everything is okay with Calibri. <coughs> Sorry, with Calibri T20. Okay, so uh, the answer is yes, it is compatible with Exagir and I think will be pretty close to, to Toradex Calibri T30. Do you offer a version for Apalis 30? Okay, we mm, let me answer your question in general. Exagir is compatible with ARM, uh, ARM modules that are based on ARM v7 architecture. And um, the question is, uh, might be a little bit with integration uh, things, but it, they are solvable. It's not a big problem. The core technology is uh, compatible with any ARM v7 uh, hardware. The next question is, when the Exagir Cloud version will be available? Vadim, I think you know more about this. How did you know about our cloud plans? <laughs> this is a secret, I think. This Actually, was a secret. <laughs> I, I'm, hope, I'm hope this will be available this year, but uh, it's depend not only from us, but from our partner, we provide the hardware clouds, hardware, arm-based cloud hardware. It is in our plans, and uh, you already, somehow you already know about it. Once we finish with uh, all technical things, we will, uh, we will announce. <laughs> will you offer a trial version? Uh, Maybe you have connected to the webinar a little bit later. We we told that uh, there is a program from Toradex uh, uh, within which uh, Toradex provides a free sample of their hardware and our module, and uh, LTEX supports this program, and we can provide you with the LTEX of the year solution free sample. For to evaluate it on Toradex hardware. And uh, okay, if you are strongly interested with it, I am going back to this slide. I hope you see it. Here is the um, the web page of Toradex website where you can request the free sample and uh, an email uh, where you can send your request to obtain. Uh, Exagir desktop free sample to evalu evaluate it on Toradex hardware. Okay, uh, the question is, how is your solution is uh, comparing to QEMO? Well, uh, QEMO is an open source solution, but uh, LTX Exagir is five times faster than QEMO. And uh, LTX Exagir has uh, has a very high level of reliability. Also, we provide full support to our customers. We help to find the um, the best applicable approach to implement uh, our solution for particular customers' case. Uh, I hope that I have answered to your question. Uh, next question is, are there any limitations in functionality? Can, can I run any application, x86 application on ARM? Uh, well, the only one, uh, and the answer is, 
the only one limitation on uh, whether LTX is a gear solution, current solution, is that uh, uh, you can you cannot you won't be able to run applica x86 applications that use kernel mono modules. Uh, that is, uh, you you can run x86 applications of the user mod. Uh, for for running kernel mode applications, we need a full vir virtualization, which is not the current LTX solution, but we have some plans for future to have to provide a full virtualization as well. Next question. Next question is, which x86 operating systems do you support on ARM? So, um, as I said before, oh, you mean do you mean uh, x86 operating system uh, systems that like uh, in my demo video it was Ubuntu 12.04. Also, we already support Ubuntu uh, 14.04, uh, Debian 7, Debian Wheezy, and uh, uh, we have an upcoming update that will provide support for Ubuntu 15 and Debian 8, Debian Jesse. Okay, uh, if I go back to the previous question regarding the x86 operating systems, uh, we also can provide support for um, for for other Linux operating systems, if you have a strong uh, need to use another operating system, because any Debian-like system can can be um, uh, can be used with our current solution, but we can also uh, develop another packages. For example, currently we have. Uh, we distribute Exegear like a DEP package, but we can distribute Exegear like with like an RPM package, and uh, this is more um, uh, with with the support of x86 operating system like Fedora and uh, the others of this family. Next question x86 application support only Windows and Linux, or does it support Android too? LTX, we have, um, here in LTX, we have a solution for mobile market where you can install uh, Xegear on Android. And, uh, um, but with this Xegear, you will get uh, an x86 Linux environment. And um, actually in, in the market uh, uh, available for users, there is not, a, there is an, a, a little bit uh, different approach. It's not the full Exagear uh, like uh, I showed in the demo, but it is a wrapping approach. We are wrapping with Exagear PC games and and these wrapped games can be run on Android. This is a good example to show how you can apply the approach of wrapping an application with Exagear and running it on ARM device. Uh, in mobile market, PC game, uh, games are very popular, so there is a demand to port PC games to mobile devices, and with the wrapping, PC games with Exegear solution, uh, you can do it, even if you don't have source codes, for example, of old PC games. Uh, one more question. Any particular requirements for running Exegear on ARM SOM, like RAM, CPU, speed? Um, I think not particular requirements. Okay, a good a good example is um, you probably know about Raspberry Pi devices, ARM-based devices, and they are 
uh, not a high speed, but even on those devices you can run LTX Exagear solution. On uh, Toradex modules you can run LTX Exagear solution and you have seen during the demo video the actual speed of uh, of running x86 applications on such module R module so you can um, you can imagine how it is uh, how, what you you have in RAM and CPU and what you have um, in the x86 running application using the Exagear. Well, Vadim, do you, do you want to add something? Uh, actually, you you said all, all needed information, but we uh, recommend to use uh, one gigabyte RAM for for our device because actually x86 application is uh, so it's developed for very powerful system and uh, usually one gigabyte RAM is is good and the second one we you we recommend to use uh, arm arm sock with uh, neon support is extension which allow to run uh, uh, x86 to CMD instruction like SSE MMX so this is Based on our experience, uh, there's a lot of application, x86 application, which use SSE and uh, Neon is required to support SSE. So that's it for this question. Next question is, when do you plan to get a final performance goal? <laughs> it's a, it is a related question because um, it depends on the uh, real use cases. First of all, uh, the numbers that I have shown, uh, let me go back to, yeah, oh, here it is. Uh, these numbers are average numbers. I mean that release version has a 60% performance of native in average. That means that um, on some applications you might have uh, even more um, performance. For example, if uh, you have applications that are not uh, very CPU intensive but uh, uses a lot of input-output operations, you will reach a performance of uh, 95%. That is almost without any overhead. Uh, this is the first point. And the second point is that currently we are not focused on developing the um, performance because uh, the performance of 60% of native is already pretty good for, for the end user perspective. Um, that is why I cannot provide you with the real, um, with the, uh, with the precise uh, numbers of the time that is required to get to hit the final um, performance goals of 85% of native. Um, if we will uh, focus on that, if it will be very strongly required, we will have, uh, we will do that. Another question is, you said you can encapsulate x86 application within Xagear apart from installing it on ARM boards. How? Um, okay, yes. Um, as I already gave an example, let me repeat it. The real uh, example that we already did uh, with the wrapping the x86 application with the X LTX Xagear solution is uh, um, is for mobile market. Uh, we have uh, suppose you have uh, a PC game, old PC game that you would like to run on uh, on your mobile devices. Uh, this way you could 
play your favorite game everywhere you go. And um, here we are uh, wrapping this PC game with Altex Exegear solution and put all this, uh, I mean, put uh, both a PC game and Altex Exegear solution into one APK file. We publish this APK file to mobile market, like uh, uh, Google Play, so then you, uh, the user can just click one button and download this application and click another button and run this application. For end user, you don't need install Exagear first or, or and then uh, run your game. You will see it like one game, like a port of game to the Android. If you are interested in tech details, I don't know, can we explain it more technically, Vadim? Actually, it's uh, it's just simple. We we pack uh, we can pack uh, your application together with Exagir in uh, one installation package. For for example, it might be Debian package for Ubuntu Debian. It might be APK file for Android, and we uh, pack with, pack uh, Exagir your application together. In one package, it, it's possible to just install this one package, and you get together Exagir with your application in one in one box. Actually, we have a um, we we do this work for uh, several company and for several applications, so it works pretty good. It's pretty simple if you uh, really. Uh, want to port your application on from x86 to ARM, but don't want to spend a lot of time on porting, find sources and so on, and it's pretty simple to just pack it together with Gajir with all, all needed settings, pre-install it and just distribute then this uh, your application uh, this kind. Okay, thank you Vadim. Next question, Vadim, could you answer it, please? If upgraded to IMX7 modules in future, will x86 applications support it similar to IMX6? Yes, sure. Short, short answer. <laughs> okay. Actually, we, yeah, we, we provide uh, actually for some. A minor update. We provide free free update of the version. If we so it's if if it just new if it new R modules uh, like so just uh, move from IMX6 to IMX7. It just uh, will provide the update. It will support it both. Yes, we we provide update and support. It. Um, the clarification here uh, for the question, let me check. Gohar, let, let me answer one of the next questions. Yes, yes. Uh, so we, the question, yes, the question is, uh, uh, that means with Exagir I need not I need not to rebuild my internal image for Linux for, for Linux image on Android for ARM platform. Directly run as it is on ARM board. Yes, you are right. You don't need to rebuild internal uh, both for Android for Linux. You just uh, took your x86 application, your installation package for x86, x and uh, Move to the move to the ARM, install and run. So you don't need to rebuild terminal image or something like this. You install Exagear like in my example in demo video was you install Exagear like a package on top of your ARM Linux. 
you don't need to change your ARM Linux image. Uh, yes, um, the question is about what about the kernel modules not supporting. Uh, yes, as I said before, uh, the one limitation of the current Altex Exegear solution is that you can run x86 application of the user mod. x86 applications that use kernel modules, you won't be able to run with current Exegear solution. Uh, but for future, we have plans to provide like full virtualization, and here we and there we can discuss about the kernel modules. Well, um, I think this is it. Thank you for everybody for uh, attending this webinar. For those who who will uh, view this webinar in recorded form? You have uh, you have uh, my email written on the on the slide gk at ltex.com, and you are welcome to send me your questions. I will reply on all of them. Uh, thank you for everybody for today's attendees. Uh, Daniel, I think we are finished with uh, today's presentation and with any questions. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot and uh, see you in another webinar with Toradex soon. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs>